Alright all you guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video, sorry about the hair, it's just um, well we've got it in a ponytail today and that's what it does, it goes curly. So anyways guys, look, I want, I want to know, I want to know about the XFL, alright, I've done, I've watched one clip, it was, believe it or not, it was my, the first time I'd ever heard or seen Vince McMahon talk. I'd only ever heard that he was the owner of the WWE and that he made some celebrity sort of appearances on like, you know, Wrestlemania and shit like that. So that was all I knew. But I did hear that in 2020, they're thinking of bringing back the XFL, which is an alternative to the NFL and the CFL. Um, I'm pretty sure it's played in the off season. And from what I heard of, from the two minute clip from Vince McMahon, uh, it's all about the fans. It's about giving the fans more access to the game. It's about changing the game, you know, little little uh, rule changes to make it more, um, you know, fan family friend friendly. And I think players get paid a salary. They may get paid an amount per win. And there's there's just a whole lot more. Like it's it's really fucking interesting. It really is. And I'm thinking that okay, well, if you're not in the NFL, if you're not playing professionally in the NFL or the CFL. This has got to be your third bet, right? So today we're just going to do a bit of research. I want to know exactly what's going on. I want to know if it's worth me trying to target it, you know? I really do. So we're just going to go down the rabbit hole a little bit today. Let's go X, F, L. And my internet is super slow. Oh, they've got a website. Sweet. The XFL is a proposed pro professional American football league owned by Vince McMahon's Alpha Entertainment. Okay. It is a successor to the previous XFL, which was controlled by the World Wrestling Federation and NBC and ran for a single season in 2001. Let's go to the website. Hashtag XFL 2020. Type here to make some noise about the XFL 2020. XFL has named Oliver Luck as its CEO. I think this is one of the best hires any sports league has made this off season. It's genuinely brilliant. Who is Oliver Luck? New, new XFL 2020 commissioner Oliver Luck said his new job will be a labor of love and a unique opportunity to reimagine the game that has been a constant in my life for 40 years. Huh, wow. All right, sweet, we're gonna watch this one. But actually, before we do, I need to know who Oliver Luck is. What's he been up to? Oliver Francis Luck is an American business executive and former football quarterback. Huh. He's currently the CEO and commissioner of the XFL. Prior to that, he was director of intercollegiate, intercollegiate athletes at West Virginia University and an executive with the National Collegiate Athletic Association, NCAA, in charge of the organization's regulatory functions. Important guy. He's a retired American football player who spent five seasons in the NFL as a quarterback with the Houston Oilers from 82 to 86. He's also the first president and general manager of the Houston Dynamo of the MLS, the Major League Soccer League, the Ma Major League Soccer. Under his watch, the Dynamo won the MLS Cup in 2006 and 7. He's the father of Indianapolis Colts quarterback Andrew Luck. Well, I did, I did, uh, I did think that might be the case. Okay. Post football. Mm. Post football. All right. So 2014, he was announced to be the executive vice president for regulatory affairs of the NCAA. Four years later. June 5th, 2018, the XFL announced that Luck would be the league's commissioner and CEO. So they're throwing money into it. It's happening. You know, it's actually happening. This fucking league is actually going to happen, which is really cool. Let's see if we can get some HD on this. And some sound. Football has been a constant in my life for more than 40 years. Hey, Oliver. I'm thrilled to have the unique opportunity to reimagine the game. I'm excited to present a dynamic version of America's favorite sport. Like you, I want a fast, a dynamic version, authentic, yet simpler game. 
and we intend to deliver that and so much more. Our games will be affordable for the entire family, and our teams, players, and coaches will be a source of pride for local communities around the country. Just last week, we distributed our proposal to 30 markets across the U.S., and we are working hard to select the right homes for our inaugural eight teams in 2020. This will be a labor of love as I get to combine my experiences as a football player and a football executive to create something that fuels your passion and makes you proud to be a fan of the XFL. Thank you. Whoa. So what sort of athletes are they going to have though? That's the thing. You know? Why is the XFL launching? An opportunity exists to reimagine America's favorite sport by putting fans at the center while leveraging a changing media landscape and evolving... That's right, yeah. No, we've got to we'll watch... Um, we will watch Vince McMahon's video because that was really interesting. He talked about... Here, here it is. This is a video that I've seen in the past which got me thinking. So let's, let's watch it again. Ah! Blocked in my country! <sighs> Alright, we're going to have to go YouTube. Let's go XFL. Try and stop me from watching it. You serious? Here it is. Let's watch it again. Bloody exciting, man. The stuff that he talks about is really cool. Really exciting. The new XFL will kick off in 2020. Quite frankly, we're going to give the game of football back to fans. I'm sure everyone has a lot of questions. Like, literally, guys, you, you, you must know, this guy's, <laughs> this guy's so well known around the world. This was the first time I'd ever seen him talk. I'd heard his name for years, but until I researched the XFL, I'd never really needed to. He's, he looks pretty old. He's probably like 70 or something. Like, I hope, he, I hope he sticks around, you know? I mean, that's the reality of life at that age. So good stuff, man. Do it, fucking, do it for the fans. Do it for the people. You, my friend, seem like a genuine bloke, but I don't know your history. So you might have had a checkered past. And I'm sure you guys will tell me about it if he has. But let's listen. I also have a lot of questions for you. In fact, we're going to ask a lot of questions and listen to players. We're going to listen to medical experts, technology executives, members of the media, and anyone else who understands and loves the game of football. But most importantly, we're going to be listening to fans. I would ask that, uh, well, the question of what would you do if you could reimagine the game of professional football? Would you, for instance, eliminate halftime? Would you have fewer commercial breaks? Would the game of football be faster? Would the rules be simpler? The new XFL will be fan-centric with all the things you like to see and less of the things you don't. And no doubt, a lot of innovations. How good is that? We will present a shorter, faster paced, family friendly, and easier to understand game. Don't get me wrong, it's still football, but it's professional football reimagined. Since we're launching in 2020, we have two years, which is plenty of time to really get it right. We intend to start conservatively with eight teams, 40 man rosters. A 10 game regular season. Eight teams, 40 man rosters, a 10 game regular season, two semi finals, and a final. And postseason featuring two semi finals and, of course, a championship game. Now, what about the players? As you know, there's a wealth of talented players that we can draw from, but in the XFL, the quality of the human being is going to be as important as the quality of the player. The quality of the human being is going to be as important as the quality of the player. Now that is interesting. How are they going to determine that? Our approach to presenting games will be multi-platform, which will allow us to engage fans and customize the viewing experience in ways that were never imaginable just a few years ago. Now be able to watch the XFL on big screens, mobile devices, and everything in between. Thank you again for joining us. We appreciate your interest, and if you have any ideas, please send them along our way because we are listening. The new XFL will be, it'll be a game that's reimagined. 
reimagine the game of professional football. Wow. Now that is cool. Dan Patrick on the return of the XFL. Six it's minutes. Six minutes. Um, all right, who should we watch? Dan Patrick or the ESPN? First take, debates if XFL will be successful. I reckon we should watch this one. Will the XFL be successful this time? No, no. This whole thing reeks of political undertone. Oh. I mean, listen, when the XFL came out before, the first time, it was all about we're the anti-NFL and, and, and the fact of, you know, we want to we want to bring that gladiator mentality, entertainment, you know, all this all this nonsense about, you know, concussions and all the, and all those type of things. You know, the hell with that. We want to be what the fans want. We want violence. Fast forward to the, the, the 2020 version of the XFL. You know, now it wants to be repackaged as wholesome. You know, it, it, no criminals. Now, I'm not saying that th there's nothing wrong with that, but, you know, also uh, no kneeling, everyone standing for the national anthem. If that doesn't reek a political undertone to me, I don't know, I don't know what else. What else. Uh, Business. It, no, no, it seems like you're marketing to a niche crowd in the situation. Mm -hmm. That's what this whole thing is all about. It's not about trying to appeal to the masses. It's a whole, this whole thing is about... You know what? We've seen, you know, we've seen whether it's sort of declines in, in, in ratings. We've right. seen we've seen people talking about we boycotting the NFL. Oh, so let me bring a league in that can appeal to that niche crowd that we've been hearing for the past year or so, and maybe we can get our foot in that door in that way. So now Damien. I don't now I don't know. You know, with all these stipulations as far as players are concerned, I don't know what, type, what quality of players you're going to get into the league because, Dominic, as you, as you know, there are not a bunch of choir boys in the National Football League. In order to play the game of football, you got to be a dog. you got to be off your rock or something. So this whole notion, we're going to, you know, we want to present a wholesome league. You know, no criminal records. Like, you're going to eliminate a bunch of guys if, if, if that's the case, if you want to really have some, you know, really want to build this thing up. Yeah, I don't know how many players they'll get, but I think you're right about they are. It's ironic that he's kind of saying that politics are going to be out of this when it's clear that they're making a political play by presenting this league in this way. And, it's, and I'm, I said it earlier that it feels like it's make football great again. I'm not going to say that it's not going to succeed because I was quite wrong about the Make America Great Again campaign. I didn't think that was going to succeed, but it worked. I think it could succeed as long as they do not try to compete with the NFL, which they clearly aren't, aren't by having their games in February. I think that the, the interesting thing here is, to, though, for sports, the reason why people watch sports is either for the personalities, the quality of the game, or civic pride, pride in your school, pride in your city, pride in your team. I don't understand how they're going to succeed if they're doing so much to tap down on player personalities. Because no one's going to watch this because the quality is great. Because it's, They just said that it's all about the personality and the person, didn't they? I only doubt that all of a sudden they're just going to have uh, a product that's better than the NFL or better than college football. No one's going to watch this because they have some sort of civ civic pride or allegiance to their college or team because these teams are just uh, made up out of thin air this year. So the Bruh, if you lived in the state or the city that they chose to be one of those eight teams, I'm sure you'd support it, right? You'd have to. The only way that they can win, I think, is on personality. So I think that their strategy is not consistently, it's not congruent, it's in conflict. They need to raise up these personalities, but they also want to tear down these personalities. It, to me, it doesn't make sense. I think that, as a strategic model, isn't going isn't gonna to work. However, they do have the advantage of Vince McMahon owning all, all the teams, which is kind of like the MLS model, where they can pay the rank and file players next to nothing because they just want to play, and then they could severely overpay the top players. They could attract big players from the NFL and from college because they could be willing to pay them 20 to 40 to $50 million, similar to how MS, MLS does when they bring over big stars from the Euro League. What's the definition of success? The definition of success is... It's got to be a salary cap, surely. Not ...replace the NFL. The definition of success is not carve off half the NFL's audience. You're right, you're right, Damien, it's a niche audience, but what I think you're wrong about is how big is that niche. Success will be finding that audience and turning a profit with it. And I'm not going to be one who wants to bet against a billionaire who's created a multi-billion dollar 
sports and entertainment company and Vince McMahon. It's a bad bet. By the way, the fact that he failed once before... Did you not hear how, like... Did you not hear his little press conference that he did before? Like, surely, man, that's legit. It sounds fucking legit to me. It really does. It sounds like he... Yeah, he's not. He, there's no expectations. He's putting it in the fans' hands, man. How can you? How can you? How can you talk down on that? It's up to you, bruh. You want something to happen? Go to the fucking XFL.com website and put your suggestion in. Why not? Before makes it a worse bet. I don't think his failure is something that's going to weigh him down. I think it's going to be something he learns from. I think it's a trampoline to success. Now back to this idea of politics. I'm sorry, Damien. You know what I hear? I hear business. I don't hear politics, I hear business. And this is gonna be a fundamental divide here. The thing is, if you created a list, if you did like a public opinion poll of the NFL, my suspicion is public complaints about the NFL would read something like, too involved in politics, too involved in social issues. We're talking about not for 100% of the audience, but things that are there, weighing on the NFL's total audience. Some great- <laughs> Look at this guy in the middle, he's like, shut up. He's not interested, eh? He's got his opinions, he's like, nah. <laughs> but he's got to, it's first take. He's got to wait. He's got to give him a chance. Politics being involved, the game softening, stars not on the field. Something like that. Those are all the things he addressed. He addressed, except for that last one, by the way, which we can come back to. He addressed having a politics free league. And you read that as being political. You read an attempt to be free of politics as political. And I'm here to tell you. I don't think that's how people are going to read it. They're going to go, yeah, you know what? I want my sports free yeah, of that I stuff. Mean, well, I want my right, right. Free. And, and, But you know what, Will? But that's, that's exactly what I'm talking about. The way you see it and the, and the way other yeah. people see it, that's, that is step, you're, not getting the, you're not getting the whole pie. You're just getting a little sliver of the pie because you see it one way, I see it another way. So that's what I'm talking about in this situation. Well, the question so is, though, the question is, Damien, for... the question is, which one of our views of how big of that piece of pie is is a successful business? And I'm here to tell you, so, I think there's an opening, there's vulnerabilities with the NFL, and Vince McMahon is the guy to find a successful business with those vulnerabilities. Well, definitely some divided opinions. Definitely some divided XFL opinions. Will kick off in 2020. The new XFL will kick off in 2020, and it's about the fans and the Bears. No, not really. Ah, uh, what was the XFL? Did you know WWE launched a football league during the Attitude Era, era from He Hate Me to the Million Dollar Championship? Ten reasons why the XFL could compete with the NFL. Okay, this is going to be the last video, guys. We've definitely gone down a bit of a rabbit hole, but um, I want to know what's going on. 2020, it's not that far away, man. February 2020 is exactly a year and a half away. Not far. Last video. Your... Ah. I'm Dequan Young, and today we present the 10 reasons why the XFL could compete with the NFL. And a big shout out to John Miller for suggesting this video. Like the video, subscribe to our channel, and join us in the comment section below, and let us know why else can the XFL compete with the NFL. WWE Chairman Vince McMahon is giving the XFL another go round. Despite it lasting just one year in 2001, Benny Mac is confident it'll be successful when he revives the league in 2020. And you know what? This guy has a right to feel confident this time around. This has learned from his mistakes, and he should find a way to make the XFL much more relevant this time around. And the NFL should be a tad bit worried. The markets. McMahon wouldn't specify which markets he's looking at, telling reporters every city is on his radar. But we have to assume at least a handful of teams will be based in cities that aren't home to NFL clubs. In 2001... Now that's cool. If they do target cities that aren't home to NFL clubs, I mean, that makes sense, right? Include the guys who, who, you know, fuck. They say it's a niche, it's going to be a niche market, but if you target places that don't have a professional team, man, and give them one, surely they're going to support it, surely. The XFL had teams in San Francisco, Chicago, New York, New Jersey, and Los Angeles. Those are four markets that have NFL teams and will support XFL teams this time, so Vince knows where not to go. But putting another team in Orlando again would make sense. He did say in the previous video that they'd given 30, 
30 proposals out to try and get eight teams of that of those 30. So that'll be interesting. How about San Antonio, Albuquerque, or Portland? How about giving San Diego or St. Louis a football team back? Omaha's a good choice also. If Vince finds the right markets, they'll support their ex-FL team. Avoid Surely. Politics. With some NFL players kneeling during the national anthem, it's caused a major uproar across America. Some owners are clashing with their players, fans are boycotting the league because the players are kneeling, or because the owners aren't confronting it. Vince said that there will be no kneeling and no politics in the XFL, only football. Hard for anyone to complain about that. Owners and players won't have so much tension, media backlash won't be happening there, and the smart events. No controversy will make everyone happy. The catch rules will make sense. It doesn't matter what the NFL rulebook states. In reality, there's no catch rule in the NFL. The rest of the league office will decide what a catch is if they feel like. We can't help but think the XFL will paint a much more clear image of what a catch is. The NFL runs into this problem every year. The XFL will be more cut and dry about it. The players. Sounds good so far, man. It really does. It's just a matter of getting the talent, getting the amount of talent. Personalities, like they say personality is important. How are they going to make personality important? Are they going to put a big focus on media after, after and before the game? They're going to put mics on everyone? You know, they're going to have helmet cams and shit? I'm sure like even by 2020, another 18 months of technology and advancements in the media world. I mean, who knows what they're going to be able to bring in? That's completely separate entity to the NFL, which is, I mean, you're competing with um, the big boys, of course. <laughs> you can love or hate guys like Colin Kaepernick and Johnny Manziel, but you sure as hell better believe that if they go to the XFL, people will watch. Just because their NFL careers top doesn't mean they'll be horrible in the XFL. You can see a large amount of big name NFL guys going to the XFL. Think about all of your favorite stars who are nearing the end of their careers. You know, Vince will probably send them an invitation. Mm. It'll be fun. It's like when washed up WWE superstars go to TNA. You kind of have to watch them for nostalgia's sake. If the XFL brings in big name former NFL players, they'll get their ratings. Vince McMahon is smart. McMahon is a billionaire for a reason. The man knows how to make savvy business decisions when he needs to. Billionaire. He won a ratings war with WCW. Hulk Hogan. Despite bidding farewell to the most marketable wrestlers. Oh my God. I watched freaking Hulk Hogan when I was like five years old. WCW. If anyone remembers WCW, let me know. My favorite wrestler was Goldberg. Goldberg, man. The spear tackle. Whoa. That was great. Hogan and Macho Man Randy Savage. Vince admitted to his mistakes and knows what he'll have to do this time. He plans to find the right medical, right coaches, and right player personnel to make the XFL work this time around. He's a genius business oh, and he seems he's to off. know how to run a business better than NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell. Better health regulations. The NFL doesn't seem to have a good concussion protocol. And it's tragic and horrifying that they aren't taking CTE research, data, and results very seriously. Again, Vince did say he was going to bring in the proper medical team to help the league. Fans are boycotting the NFL because of their ignorance towards CTE, and some young football players across the country are even quitting because of it. But if Vince is serious about making the XFL safer, then there's no reason not to watch it. Anything goes. In its only season back in 2001, the XFL proposed a more anything goes and relaxed style of play. Less penalties were called, and defensive backs were allowed to play a little more aggressively and physically. As for the NFL, Playing defense seems to result in a penalty half the time. Football fans will gladly watch, so long as the XFL refs act as the complete opposite of the NFL refs. The NFL well, that can't happen. equals the XFL season. Vince told reporters that the XFL season will begin in January or February, just as the NFL offseason begins. After the Super Bowl, fans have to wait seven months for meaningful football to return. Boring. But the XFL season will have a 10-week schedule, plus the playoffs. What will NFL fans have to do in the meantime? Watch the XFL. And by the time the XFL season ends, the NFL will be on the way. We'll owe Vince a lot for helping us get through the NFL offseason. And with that, ratings shouldn't be a problem for the XFL. NFL ratings are... I've got to be honest, I'm planning on helping you guys get through the next offseason myself, with my channel. So don't, you know, don't, don't like, don't, don't, yeah, no. Going down. Ratings going down. Down, down, down. Ratings for the NFL continue to go down for many reasons, and the league should be scared. They went down a ton in 2016. 
Marvin Nathanson reported the ratings dropped from 13 percent. Jeez, that's some good fancy dress. Ratings were down between 12 to 20 percent. This is where events have to be smirking behind the scenes. NFL ratings are down. This grown of football fans can now turn to the XFL. Need we say more? No criminals. Vince said no criminals will be in the XFL. If they have a DUI, he's not letting them play. It's that simple. Good. That means we're only watching good men who want to play football. Just good-natured people. That sounds good to us. I, I guess Johnny Manziel won't be playing. This is the Quine Young signing off. I can't tell if he's being sarcastic with that last call. Because obviously, you know, a DUI or a, or a stupid, you know, violation, a stupid, what do you call it? Uh, conviction for something dumb can keep you, keep you out of this. So I guess, oh, I don't know. I don't know what to make of that. But, you know what? We've, uh, we've definitely learned a bit about the XFL. And I, I just want to see, um, I want to watch a little bit of it. XFL Championship Game 2001. I reckon we're going to have to watch this. Let's do this. Oh, it's got a black ball, doesn't it? Black and red. That's pretty cool. Gotta say. XFL. The million dollar game. <laughs> this should be interesting. X for extreme. Yeah, so there's no there's no toss. It's a it's a it's a sprint. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here we go. XFL Grand Final. Oh no. Who was it? They didn't say Gostkowski, did they? No way. Gostkowski? No, it's not that guy from the Patriots, surely. <laughs> Three nothing. Where you going, boy? Ah! Oh, breaks the tackle, breaks another one. It's got to be a tight end, surely. Oh, the fake toss! <laughs> Who was marking him? No one. <laughs> Body slam. That's actually a really good celebration. I haven't seen that. Someone should bring that back in the NFL. What? <laughs> what the hell went there? Oh, he's off. Steps around the outside. I don't know about that kick. That seemed like a rugby kick.
Money, money, money. Ah. Oh no! Pick six, straight to the house. See ya! Here we go. And another one. Straight down the middle. Bit of Ricky Martin. You know? <laughs> also one of my favourites back in uh, 2001. I was obsessed. Absolutely obsessed with Ricky Martin. What a legend. <laughs> Whoa, what a halftime show. Thanks, ladies. Thanks. All right, let's go. 21 nil to whitewash. Oh man! How many picks do you want to get? Yes! Good catch. <laughs> Stone cold Steve Austin that was, wasn't it? Oh, he must have said five. He must have said hut on hut on two, because he goes hut hut. Right? I learned that at training the other day. Keep going. Oh, oh shit! <laughs> it's a forward lateral. Not allowed. It's a forward pass. Where you going, boy? Oh! 31 nil. Thrashing. The strong toss. Oh! <laughs> Whoa. No way, man. Next time these two teams play each other? Well, that never happened, my friend. But that was, guys, that was my first and probably only look on this channel at the at the uh, the XFL so it's coming February 2020 and um, I'll still be here I'll be watching you'll be watching it'd be very interesting to see where the eight teams that they choose will be from and it'll be very interesting to see what kind of coverage they're gonna give what sort of you know interaction between the fans and the players that's gonna be sick I have full faith you know, Vince McMahon, even though I've only met him just uh, a few days ago. But it should be good. I'm looking forward to it. So if you have enjoyed this video, or you enjoy the XFL, or you're looking forward to it, or you want to support my channel, please press like, subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next one. I hope you enjoyed.